diagnosing and troubleshooting engine misfire under load. So why am I doing this video now and why am I doing it on the floor? Well, it's because we've been trying to get our charger ready and the shop is in utter complete chaos. Every surface that we normally do these videos on is covered with some sort of like paint, sandpaper, supplies, parts, tools. It's just, it's crazy. So I came in here this morning and I was like, I got to get this place cleaned up. I got I to gotta get some semblance of order and humanity back into it. Throw away some garbage, put some tools away and whatnot. So, uh, and of course, in doing this, I move a box and behind the box is an old distributor cap and an old coil. And I'm like, what are those doing there? And it's Oh, that was a video I wanted to do about diagnosing engine misfires under load. And both of those components came from engines that had that problem. So I was going to use them as props. Well, you know, that, that's, that's life with ADD. You know what I mean? You get sidetracked and it's just like psh, off to 10,000 other things. But let's get back to this and let's cover this topic because this is really common. And I think this will be really useful for a lot of guys. You know, before you start firing the parts cannon at your engine, Let's go through step by step and do a diagnosis for this troubleshooting. So the first step, key word here now is we're talking misfire. Now, drivability issues aren't always misfires. You can have a stumble or a hesitation under load, but if it's fuel related, it's technically not a misfire. A misfire is when a spark plug or all of the plugs either don't fire or fire at the wrong time. So to get those terms correct, if it's an ignition issue, it's a misfire. If it's a fuel related problem, hesitation, stumble, backfire, whatever, it's not a misfire. But now how do we determine which is which? It's from the seat of our pants, it's driving this thing. And we've covered this before on this channel, but let's do it again because it, this applies to a lot of, you know, really to everything. Fuel related or induction related issues will always manifest themselves softly. So here's the situation. You're sitting still in gear. You give the gas and the car goes, ah, 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 and then it goes, right? Or it'll even backfire or stall. It's a stumble, it's a hesitation, it's a backfire. But the symptoms will manifest themselves for lack of a better term, softly. They come on gradually, rapidly, but gradually, and they leave gra rapidly, but gradually. So you give a gas, <coughs> and it goes. Ignition system issues, a misfire, always is sharp and abrupt. So, same thing, you're sitting there in gear, you're going to pull away, you give a gas, and it'll go, <coughs> and it'll go, right? sharp and abrupt that's how you can tell it's an ignition related issue and the ones that happen under load are very common can be very frustrating but they're simple they, because there's only two things that can cause this issue and it's either a weak spark or a misdirected spark so let's talk about the weak spark first wait before we even do that under your hood let's assume that everything is in decent serviceable condition, meaning that the spark plugs don't have 100,000 miles on them. They're gapped approximately correctly. They're not oil fouled, they're not gas fouled, they're not carbon fouled. They're, they're okay. The plug wires, they're all right. They're not shredded, they're not burned. They haven't been laying on header tubes and they're, they're, not, they're not all destroyed and stuff like that. They're relatively fresh, a year, a year old, two years old, right? Same thing with the cap and the rotor. You look at them, you eyeball them, everything looks okay. They're not, you don't see any, any distinct cracks or anything like that. So what would cause an ignition system misfire and only under load? So start with the weak spark. Now a weak spark, there's only two things that are going to give you a weak, a weak spark from the coil. And that's going to be either not enough voltage getting to the coil or a bad coil. Common, it happens. And the easiest way to check and see if you've got the right voltage from the coil or sufficient voltage from the coil is just to, with the engine running, pull the coil wire off either from the coil 
or from a or from the distributor cap and just pull it away slightly so you should be able to see a half to a three quarter inch bright blue spark jump between the coil and the wire or the wire and a distributor cap which, whichever one you, you decide to pull you should get a bright blue snapping spark you should be able to hear the spark if you don't get that if you pull a wire away let's say a quarter of an inch and the engine stalls or you get out to about a half an inch or so and you have a very weak yellow spark and you don't hear that snapping well check the voltage to the coil if the voltage to the coil is within within where it's supposed to be it's weak coil change out the coil you're going to be good to go all right so that's a situation where there's a weak coil or low voltage to the coil but now let's look at some of the more elusive and definitely more common causes of a load induced misfire so that's what we have this cap and this coil for so these are from two different engines and both of these engines had exactly the same symptoms the engines ran fine idled fine drove down the road fine no issues both showed a hot spark so you wouldn't think that there was anything wrong with these components but you go a little bit deeper they each had the same symptoms but they had and and the same causes really but they manifested themselves in different ways so let's look at this cap first so if we look down the posts of this cap you see nice bright copper colored contact down there there's copper down there nice copper down there but now if we look down this post we don't see any copper at all it's all burned ashy looking so now what caused that this is so common it's not funny when the wire was pushed down onto this terminal it wasn't down deep enough it wasn't pushed down deep enough for the terminal on the wire to make contact with the terminal inside the cap and so the spark was forced to jump a gap so now two things happen when you cause a spark to jump a gap the first is that it'll lay down carbon around wherever that spark is traveling it'll leave carbon and that's what that ashy gray stuff is in there the second thing is that it amplifies the spark it makes it hotter so here's an example if you guys are familiar with the old kickstart motorcycle days if you had a bike that was bulky to start and you suspected it might be a little flooded what you do is you take the spark plug wires and you pull them just slightly off the plugs so that you're creating a gap of like a, an eighth or a quarter of an inch between the term the, the contact in the wire and the spark plug and that would amplify the spark when you kicked it through that would amplify the spark enough so that it would light a slightly wet combustion chamber a slightly wet spark plug and the bike would light it would start and then once it's running you push the plug wires back on and you're going down the road but when it happens with a car and it happens by accident, you don't know that there's that gap in there. And so as you're driving down the road, it's always throwing a hotter spark. It's always, it's always amplifying that spark. Now, in the case of this particular engine, this one had carbon core wires on it. Not solid core, but carbon core wires. And so what happened was the wire burned inside the wire so right right in this section right here between the metal contact and the wire just about here in the boot the carbon section the carbon center of the wire burned away now the longer you run the engine with this gap happening with the spark jumping the gap the further it'll burn that carbon away until eventually it doesn't want to jump the gap at all once there's a load induced it stops it goes to the path of least resistance which is inside the cap to the carbon and and actually to the rotor also and you'll find that in a situation like this not only can it burn the wire but if you're using solid core wires it'll burn and crack the cap it can also burn through the rotor and cause the rotor to ground itself or allow the spark to ground itself through the rotor to the center of the distributor very common stuff but that's what caused this engine to misfire under load. Eventually, the wire, the center of the wire burned away. Spark couldn't jump the gap under load, and that was it would misfire. When there was no load, engine ran just fine. So that's that. Very, very common. If you haven't come across this yourself yet, you certainly will. 
always make sure that the wire is completely plugged into you don't you don't want to put the wire on like this you want to work the boot up plug the wire all the way into the cap as far as it'll go and then slide the boot over so that it seals so that was that situation now on this super coil now this thing threw a hell of a spark really strong solid spark but under load it would misfire so what happened here the same basic situation as we had with the cap now here's a standard coil and you can see the center part the terminal inside the post is very close to the top it's maybe a half inch now and so you take a typical plug wire and you plug it right in there and it's making contact on these coils and most high performance coils the tower the post is much deeper and they do that so that any stray spark won't find its way to the, to the rest of the wiring on the coil. It, it's, a, it's a way to make sure that this thing is not going to misfire due to a stray spark. But now if you take this, the, the, the contact for this is way deep. The contact for this is like three quarters of an inch down. You plug this wire in just like this and it's got to jump a serious gap. Now you have the same issues with a hotter spark getting through, which a hotter spark isn't necessarily a bad thing. But over time, the heat and the carbon will build up inside this, this tower enough so that it cracks. And that's what happened here. And you can see there's a carbon track that runs right along there and drops off the side. There are other carbon tracks on here too. This thing must have been just sparking like the 4th of July under certain circumstances. But normally, like I said, the engine idled fine, drove down the road fine, everything was good. But when you put a load to it, well, that's when all of this would start arcing around. And there you go. Classic misfire under load. Simple fixes. And most people don't even think to look at stuff like this because it, it actually it is too simple, right? But when you're doing this, when you're setting up your car, Again, assuming that all of the parts are in decent shape, make sure that all of the electrical connections in the ignition system, the cap to the wire, the wire to the plug, make sure that, it, and even the rotor. You know, sometimes the, the center part of the rotor won't be high enough to meet the button in the center of the cap, and that will give you an issue where it's always jumping a gap. You want to make sure that the, the only gap in the entire ignition system that ever has to be jumped is that the spark plug itself because any gap anywhere else will eventually give you that misfire under load i hope you got something out of that i'll see you tomorrow